Rami X back with another video, and today's video is special. Really special, in fact. Today, actually, is special. To be frank, not this very day that I'm recording on is necessarily special, though I'm sure it is for many people around the world. For me specifically, the day that this drops, if everything goes according to plan, should be August 31st, hopefully, which is my birthday. And, well, for me, that is one of the most special days of them all. As a birthday wish, I hope the continued prosperity of my channel, and for the continued prosperity of all of you watching, that you all remain in good health, and that I, too, remain in good health, as well as those around me. I wish for a good rest of my year and a good year to come. And with that, we can continue the video. Sorry for the somewhat long intro, and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well. It is my birthday. It'd be a small token of your appreciation. Subscribe if you're new here, and uh, we can now begin the video. What if Naruto had nine lives? With that being said, this what if was inspired by myself, meaning that I am therefore the creator of this what if. Everything that I create in this what if is my own, but if somebody wishes to use the same concept, feel free as long as you are to mention me in the video. With that being said, I now control this story. I hope all of you enjoy this story. And we should now begin the story. Naruto would be born in the same fashion that he was born in the original timeline, except he is special. Not only is he half Uzumaki and half Namikaze, the son of a former Nine-Tails Jinjuriki and the son of the fourth Hokage. The Jinjuriki of the Nine Tails and somebody with massive chakra reserves. Never mind his healing factor. He is also a chosen one, so to speak. Somebody who was chosen. Chosen by whom or what? Well, we will see. With that, we shall now continue the what if. We skip all the way to Zabaza in the land of waves. Nothing changes. Not how strong Naruto is, not how fast Naruto is, how powerful. You get the point. None of his physical attributes change. None at all. He is the Naruto that we know and love. The only change would occur in the land of waves. It is their second encounter with Sabaza. And here, Haku gets Naruto, Sasuke, and at this point, even Sakura inside of the ice mirrors. Sakura has been hit with 11 Sanbon by Haku, Sasuke by 25, and Naruto by a whopping 41 Sanbon. Riddled throughout his body, Sakura has basically been paralyzed. Not that this will continue in future, just at the moment her body is near frozen. Sasuke, every time he moves, it hurts. As if he's being stabbed by blades every single time he makes one step. Every single time he moves one muscle. But as for Naruto... Naruto's beaten. 41 Senbon riddled throughout his body. They hurt beyond compare. But most of all, they anger Naruto. They make him mad and furious. That some random ninja would hurt he and his friends. What do they gain from doing such a thing he fought? But most of all, what crossed his mind was... The death of him, and with him, Sasuke and Sakura. 
to people he cared for dearly. And he noted to himself that if they were all to die, then Kakashi would probably die with them. This meant he had to do something for himself, for his team. And so, Sasuke prepared, and so did Naruto. They talked to themselves, but it was too late. Haku was already preparing something himself. Six more Senbon. All to be flown at Sasuke and Sakura. He knew that Naruto being the boy that he was would sacrifice himself. And as such he would. Naruto would jump in front of the Senbon, taking all 47, fatally wounding him. It would be then that Haku would prepare ten more. And Naruto would fall on his knees. On one knee, to be exact. Looking up at Haku, he... He didn't know what to say. He would never become Okage, and... He would never be seen as nothing more than a monster. His life's work was... Was finished. Not finished, more so com incomplete, so to speak. But at this point in time... It was a closing, so to Naruto it was finished, it was done. Everything he had hoped was gone. Never to return. So he looked up at Haku with a look in his eyes that can only be described as pure charisma. Even charm, so to speak. As he knew he was going to die here. Naruto would stand. Also, it is not known what in this timeline changed Haku from trapping them all in the ice mirrors and also changed Haku from basically Sasuke dying, kind of, if you guys know what I mean. Unlocking the Nine Tails Chakra, which allowed Naruto to obliterate Haku. Anyways, I say for them, no more. Anyways, <laughs> with that being said, Naruto would look up at Haku as Haku would prepare ten more Senbon. With this, he could kill all three of them in one swoop. Naruto's too weak. He can't block the Senpon once more. Sasuke can barely move, if at all. And Sakura? Well, she's paralyzed, so to speak. With that, Naruto would stand in the face of the Senpon as they came hurling towards the three. He would look back at Sasuke and Sakura. Sakura. Sasuke. If you two survive, if you can tell a story, tell them that Naruto Uzumaki risked his life. No. That Naruto's, that Naruto Uzumaki's life was taken, fighting for what he held dear. Fighting for Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Harano. Naruto would smile looking back at the sunbon, which had now pierced through him and into his heart. He fell to the ground, and Naruto was now dead. Sakura's paralyzation would be stopped. Her body would be forced to move to help Naruto. So with Sasuke, Sasuke would pull every sunbon out of his body, and Sakura would do the same, rushing to Naruto's aid. But they couldn't save him. It was too late. Haku would spit these words in front of Sasuke. That it was too late. That he couldn't do anything. That he wasn't strong enough. And Sasuke's two Tomoe Sharingan. And then three Tomoe Sharingan would emerge. Fortunately, it wasn't enough pain to go through that allowed Sasuke to awaken his Mangekyo. But for a second. For a few seconds. He had achieved the level of the Mangekyu Sharingan. With that being said, a two Tomoe in Sasuke's left eye and a three Tomoe in Sasuke's right eye, Sasuke, now stood up. Using the two and three Tomoe, he would battle Haku with Sakura's small but helpful aid. Haku would be defeated. And Sasuke and Sakura would be, would be broken, mourning. 
mourning Naruto's death. Where, where am I? Naruto would say. <laughs> he would sniff the air. It did not smell like the normal air that he usually breathed. It was musty, so to speak, thick, and it reeked of a smell that he couldn't describe. But he looked around in this black pit of nothingness that he found himself in. Where am I? Naruto would hear his voice echo as he would yell it. Where am I? Naruto would yell. A man would tap Naruto on his shoulder. You, my friend, are in the world between my world and your world. A purgatory of sorts. What? What exactly do you mean by that, Naruto? Uzumaki. You are dead. No! No, 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 I'm not dead. We have a misunderstanding. I was in a fight with a guy named Haku. What happened? I'm not dead. Don't say that. I am afraid that it is only the truth. That I speak only the truth. Huh? No. No. That's a lie! Naruto would punch the man. The man wouldn't move. And Naruto's fist felt like it was on fire. From the pain of punching the man. Though this is a dimension between my world and your world, pain is still felt. This world's smells are amplified by a hundred. Same with the feeling. And my words, they mean a hundred times more than they do in this world than in the world of the living. So you're dead? Is that what you're telling me? And now I'm gonna forever pass on soon and be in the place that you are? Well, not necessarily. You are special, Naruto. What do you mean? Unfortunately, you were blessed, but also cursed. You were given a beast that can heal you and save you from near death in multiple situations. But you were cursed with a rampant and raging beast within your belly. One who would never dare help a gin help a person. The man was gonna say Jinjerky. One who was trapped within you and curses your name, day in, day out. That is the Nine Tails. I see. I know of the Nine Tails. The people in the life hate him. Like Mizuki, Naruto thought to himself. Precisely. He is a beast. But you were also blessed being an Uzumaki with high chakra reserves and the ability to heal faster than the others. That is a gift. But you are special in a different way. Huh? What do you mean? How special can I be? How different can I be from a normal person? Naruto thought to himself. He was already beast boy that was outcasted by his village in more ways than he has fingers and toes to count. What else could he be different in? Was it his teeth or hair or the blood that runs through his veins? What could it be? Was it his destiny? Naruto will look at the man in silence. You are special in the way because you have been chosen. Chosen for what? You, Naruto, have nine lives. Nine lives? Huh? W what do you mean? Ugh. You can die nine times over. Whether it is physical, say, in the way that you have died now. I think that a sunbond pierced your heart, or a fatal artery, I'm, yeah, I'm not too sure on the specifics. Or, say, from old age or illness. But 
Once those nine lives are over. Yeah, yeah, I die. Just send me back to the land of the living or whatever. Naruto. I don't have much time here. My hold here is only strong so long as you wish to be here. So long as you wish to know more. Since you wish not to know more any longer, my own spiritual essence is being used to hold myself in this plane and hold you here as well. <sighs> I am the guardian who protects those who uh, inherit this gift. And I will make my talk brief with you. As brief as possible. This may take hours, but I will try to make it take minutes to explain to you, Naruto. <clears throat> <clears throat> Naruto Uzumaki. Once you have used up your tenth life, once you have gone into your tenth life, you are not Naruto Uzumaki. Huh? What do you mean? What I'm saying is from now on you have nine more lives. Your original life has been taken by Haku Yuki. And now, you have nine more to spare. If in the event that all nine of those lives are taken, leading you on to a tenth slash eleventh life, you will no longer be Naruto Uzumaki. You will be the reincarnation of the devil himself. What? No, you speak nonsense. The devil doesn't exist. Oh, well, he does. But he is not what you know him as. He is a person. A man who brings calamity wherever he goes. Whatever soil he steps on. Turn to ash. He burns fires that rage on for days. He... He brings about destruction? Yes. I see. So I won't actually be the devil, but somebody so evil that they call him that. Precisely. Precisely. Is that so? Mm. Well, I don't really know how to feel about this. I am near immortal now, and... I have nine lives, but if I die nine more times, then I become the literal reincarnation of evil. Evil is incarnate. That's right. The man who originally had this ability, his name, his name was evil. E-F-B-I-L. The evil incarnates that followed after him changed their names to E V I L. L. Two L's at the end. The word evil is E V I L. Because to speak evil's name is to. is to what? Nif. Well, the people back in the day believed that it was to curse you, which is not true at all. You can say it as many times as you wish. But there was an old folklore that if you say it a million times, or a hundred million, or a billion even, that evil himself, he will come, and he will reincarnate into someone you love, and that person will bring about great destruction to your life and to everything you love. You see? So I... I don't, so. If I'm understanding this right, I stop becoming who I am and I become this evil guy. He doesn't care about anything except for destruction. If I die nine more times, precisely. I'm glad that you understand already, Naruto. Some of the people before you have, if they've laughed at me, it has took a lot of convincing. My foothold here in this plane is not strong, Naruto. But do not waste your lives. And if you do... If 
if you waste your lives, then, then you will become what you hate most. They say that evil torments its incarnates, the host, specifically. That he makes them wish that they were dead as they see him take everything that they hold dear to him and destroy it in front of their eyes. Anyways, our talk here is done, Naruto. It should be noted, though. You can kill your own self 18 times. What? 18? Uh, how? Well, it's actually quite simple. To die by your own hand is not a death that evil would do. He would never kill himself as he wishes to bring about destruction for as long as he lives. I see. As an evil incarnate, you do not possess the infinite amount of lives of killing himself. It's something evil would never do, and thus it's something that would never happen by evil's own hand. I see. So what are you suggesting? I am suggesting, Naruto, that, well, you have an additional 18 lives that you can use to kill yourself if need be. They say that evil cursed his own host. So that if they ever figured out about him ever being able to join their own bodies, that maybe they would kill themselves on their last life. But instead he took that option away by enabling them 18 chances to kill themselves. Nine chances to die. And another nine to live as him. Is that so? Yes, Naruto, it is so. It is as true as can be. Wait, so... If that is right, then I have... What's 18 plus 18? It is the... No, I'm counting! Shh! 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. So I have 36... Lives? Y yes, I was going to say that, Naruto. Well, I figured it out on my own. 36 lives. Nine of which will be used by my evil incarnate if I ever die too much. But, by killing myself, I have. I have. I have. I have. 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 20. 29 lives? Uh, close enough. Yes, 29 lives. Sure. Okay, so... Wait, I'm going to recount. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Huh? What the heck? Wait, let me think. Anyways, to not bore you, this conversation is not going to go on much longer, Naruto. You're doing a lot of math, and I know you don't like to do that. Have you been watching me? No, but I just know you're the type of person. When you die, you will be in this way reborn. Your hair will be clean, your flesh clean, you will even appear angelic in some ways. The person that cursed evil made his incarnates appear similar to angels when reborn. I see. To damn evil and everything he stands for. So he was put down. Yes. In the past. If he gets a strong enough host, he can come back as the true evil. I see. Well, let us... I just hope that never happens. You're right, Naruto. Let us hope that he never strikes again. Because if he does, trust me, Naruto, it will not be good. With that being said, Naruto would be reborn. His eyes would open. 
To Sasuke and Sakura, he would appear to have wings behind him. As he stood, clothes would wrap around him, naturally. These clothes were white and mimicked his jumpsuit, but the white version of it. Pure white. It was as if Naruto was an angel. Wings protruding from his back, they would disappear before the eyes of Sakura and Sasuke. They would look at Naruto and then back at themselves and then back at Naruto once more. Naruto would crack his hands. Wow. Life one. You were good. But these others should be pretty, pretty good. Naruto would sigh. <sighs> oh, it feels good to breathe in air. Real air, not the air they use in the other place. <sighs> oh, I feel so alive. Naruto would do a few stretches, touching his tippy toes and <laughs> whatnot. Well, where's Haku? I thought he'd still be here. How long was I gone? About five minutes, probably. And what do you mean by gone? Well, I died, did I not? Yeah. Haku put a sun bond through your heart. You shouldn't be standing here like nothing happened five minutes ago. The thought of Naruto being something ungodly, it brought chills to Sasuke. To being someone who can cheat death. That was insane to him. <laughs> Naruto would look around as he would see that the ice mirrors were no longer present. Has Haku been defeated, Sasuke? Yeah. Did you do it? Or was it Kakashi or Sakura? Me, no, Sakura would say. It was all Sasuke. He did this cool thing and his Sharingan went bow, bow, and then he defeated Haku. I see. Thank you for the details, Sakura. So you awaken the next stages of your Sharingan? Is that what it is? The two and three to my, yes. But one eye lacks the three to my. It appeared to have manifested due to the rage. Or so. Something, I don't know. Anyways, with that being said, Naruto would exit the area of Sasuke and Sakura, who at this point were exhausted on their knees. And backs. Naruto would continue walking. It would be here that he would see Kakashi killing Zabuza. He would sigh. <sighs> if only you all had the ability to cheat death. Imagine what this world would be like. <sighs> Mustn't take life for granted, I guess. With that, he would walk up to Kakashi. He would take Zabuza's body, would put it beside Haku's beaten body. It would be there that Aku would die from his injuries. And he would bury the two together. Placing Zabuza's blade between the two of them. Have it. Have this blade and go on to the heavens, Naruto would say. I wish you great luck and death. And hopefully, you two are treated better than you were in this life. Zabuza wasn't fully dead, nor was Haku. They could both hear Naruto's words and knew of them as sincere. But from lack of oxygen, they would truly die. Not before Zabuza and Haku managed to share what words of condolence. Clearing the dirt with their own hands. They would be able to hold hands in death. As Zabuza would tell Haku that he's definitely going to hell. But for Haku, he can go somewhere much better. Snow would befall the area. It started off as rain, but when it came closer to the earth, it was white. White as snow. Later on, Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, and Kakashi, Team 7 that is, would leave the Land of Waves, venturing back to Konoha. 
It would be here, in Konoha, that Naruto would, well, he would sleep. He had literally just been on Death's door. Actually, he had been through Death's door into a place that he now calls Purgatory. Or breathless pocket of air. He hates Purgatory, might I add. With that being said, the next day, he would take on a few D-Rank missions alone. He would test out his strength. Something that the man that he met in Purgatory, Miho is his name, forgot to mention, was that as evils incarnate, or my apologies, incarnate and reincarnation, he, well, each time he gets closer and closer to becoming a host of evil, he gets closer and closer to obtaining the power of evil. Meaning that each time that Naruto dies, he gets over 10 to 2 to sometimes only 1.5 or 1.3 times stronger. He forever increases in power as he reaches closer and closer to death. With that being said, Naruto would witness this. He felt faster on his feet, stronger, quicker, more intelligent, smart, but also as stupid as he was before dying. But now he knew that he was a little dumb. Instead of thinking that he was the smartest person in the room, he knew that he wasn't. And he had grown. His arms, his biceps, his forearms, they had grown tremendously. He, uh, and he now had abs starting to come in, and his hair had grown just a little bit longer. Enough to reach far past his ears, closer to his jawline. And his legs, his calves had grown stronger, and his mind had grown in both capacity and an intelligence. Naruto would go to the Hokage. As he would kneel to the Hokage. Bowing first, and then he would kneel. Lord Third. Lord Third. Y yes, Naruto, what is it? May I go on a mission? Hmm? A searing mission. Whatever you can give me that I can do alone. You are just the right person. I was going to ask for a Genin to do this mission, but there's no other better Genin than you that's available. And since you've just come back from the Land of Waves, I thought that you'd need rest, but if you were still bustling with energy, I suppose you could go. Do you want to be accompanied? Though this mission is more of a solo man mission. If we send more than one Genin to the village that I want you to go to, they may take it as an act of treason, war even. Where do you wish to send me? A village. It's known as Piso. The village hidden in peace. Hmm. So it's a peaceful village. As such, I should be the only one to go. No other people are needed. Well, it is very, very close to the Leaf Village. I would not send you on it if it wasn't safe. The message? The message? Oh. Uh. Naruto couldn't put his words together. Something was in his mouth. So we would spit it out, and it appeared to be blood. Huh. Naruto thought to himself. Are you sure you're able to go on this mission, Naruto? Maybe you should get some more rest. No. I think that this is just the temporary side effects of being so close to death's door. I see. You're starting to worry me a little, Naruto. But if you truly do believe that you are able, I shall send you to the village and in peace. It would be then that Naruto would leave. Alone for the village, hidden in peace.
upon arrival. He would look around. It was a special village, so to speak. And everything around him was, well, special. He looked around and he quite literally saw many things. He saw water. He saw small fires, contained, of course. He saw children playing, adults talking, ninjas sparring. And in the middle of all of them was a decently old man who appeared to be in his 60s or 50s. He stood with his staff, watching everyone, watching every single person play and talk. It was interesting, Naruto thought. He had approached the man with a message. It was written by Lord Third, who wished to act the the legitimate in peace, come to an agreement with both the land of fire and the leaf village itself. The man would read over the village and would tell Naruto that he wishes for peace, but ask his him a question. The man would ask, Naruto, what rank of ninja are you? I am a Kenny. I see. One second, I... Hmm. I shall be back in a second. What's your name? Naruto Uzumaki, sir. I will be back shortly, Naruto Uzumaki. The old man would go to his chambers and would come out with a piece of paper. He would then rest the piece of paper on a wooden table of sorts as he would grab two chairs for himself and for Naruto. He would then look to Naruto and ask, <clears throat> Boy, do you know how to read and write? Yeah, of course I do, but my handwriting, it's, it's quite sloppy. Well, then we can start today. You will write what I say, and then you will relay it to the third Hokage. Are you sure that this is how you choose to write your message? For me to write down what you say and then to tell Lord Third such things? Precisely what I ask of you, actually. Natural spring water. It is peaceful. As is this letter. Have you gotten that so far, young boy? Y yeah. Continue on. I wish for peace and only peace within my village. If the leaf secures such an opportunity for my village to be kept out of the way of violence within the land of fire, then I do wish to become a part of the leaf village. Not a part of it, rather an ally. I wish to remain anonymous, to remain <clears throat> on a part, if that makes sense, of the Leaf Village. I want no part in becoming the Leaf Village. Rather an ally, a separate entity, a separate group, a separate idea. <clears throat> Over the years, the man would take a sip of water. Over the years, the Leaf has been in many conflicts. I wish no part in that if a future conflict was to come. Though I would send my men, some of my men, some of my greatest ninja. I would not wish for my own village to partake in such violence and war. See to it that that is heard by the third Okage. My answer is yes. <clears throat> now, young Naruto, I ask you a question. You told me earlier that you were a Genin. Are you a normal Genin? Are you an ordinary Genin in the V village? Naruto would lie. Well, he just wouldn't tell the truth. <clears throat> I mean, I guess I am special, as is really everyone in the world, you know? Everybody's pretty special. In their own ways, you know? But yeah, I'm just a Genin. Your average Genin. Okay. 
I have a question. Do... <clears throat> do you want peace or do you want war? To further peace. I believe... That... Life should be cherished to the fullest. <clears throat> that each second that we spend in life should be... Spent breathing in the cool air. You see, just like that, I have wasted three seconds breathing. A sniffle, that's another second, you know? So I think that every single... <clears throat> every single step of the way in my life should be spent living and cherishing each moment. <clears throat> I believe that that is what I want for the people of the Leaf Village as well. War incites violence and vengeance, rage and hate. It even sometimes diminishes hope. <clears throat> All I see is blood when I think of war. And that's a waste. Ninja like me going out to war to fight off another village or another person. Another group of people with the same ideals as myself. Fighting on different sides, forced to fight even. <clears throat> That's not right, not at all. I believe that war breeds peace. But if peace is to happen, then blood is to be spilled. I can never imagine a reality where true peace occurs, where blood is not on the ground, you know? That's my answer. <clears throat> I know it didn't uh, exactly, it wasn't a clear answer, and didn't answer your question necessarily in full, but it's all I got, you know? I'm not the smartest tool in the shed, but I'm not the dumbest either. Hmm. You know, quite a lot about yourself, young boy. Would you like to stay here in the peaceful village? In the village and in the beast? Would you like to, I don't know, just take up residence here, maybe? Live here, create a family here. No, not at all, but thank you for your offer. <clears throat> I believe that my business is within the Leaf Village, you know? And that it will forever be within the walls of the Leaf Village that I resign for the most part. So unfortunately, I can't take up your offer. What is your name? <clears throat> Funny you ask. My name is Pisa. Huh? Naruto would look around. Who said that? Wow. Uh, okay. So your name's Pisa? Well, yes, my name is Pisa, but... <clears throat> I am right here. Naruto would look to his left and then to his right. On his right, he saw a very big man. He was huge. In resemblance to that of, say, the Hulk, or a very muscular person. <clears throat> then he would look in front of him. He saw a pretty frail man who appeared to be delicate, old, and you get the point. He would then look back and forth, and he would ask, Does this mean that both of your names are Pisa? Yes, Naruto, this is my grandson. Piso the third. Oh, okay. Um, that is super cool, Naruto would say. Negotiations would be met, and Naruto would shortly afterwards, spending one day at an inn in the village and in peace, would leave. Leaving at the start of day, he would get home before 5 p.m. It would be there that he would convey his message to Lord Third, as Lord Third would go himself to the village and in peace, just for a short time, and very, very quickly. It would be here that he would formally shake Piso's hand, as well as Piso's son and Piso's grandson's hands. He would agree to peace within the village and in peace, and would also agree in shared resources, such as trade, and even in some ways economy. <clears throat> That was a real cough. Uh, I don't know, something's going on in my throat. Anyways, with that being said, Naruto 
would arrive back home, and as he did, he slept. After giving his message to the Lord Third, of course. With that being said, he slept soundly in his own bed, but it was only a nap for about two hours. It would be then that Kakashi would knock on his door. Naruto would answer, and Kakashi would tell him that the tuning exams are soon. Naruto remembered that the tuning exams are exactly how you become a tuning. So, they became very important in Naruto's mind, and they became almost the only thing, excuse me, that he could think of. And when I say only, I mean only. It was on his mind constantly. Becoming a Chunin, and then becoming a Jonin, and then becoming a Hokage. But with that being said, not all things are achieved in such a way. And definitely not becoming a ninja. Or the Hokage. <clears throat> so with that being said, Naruto would partake in the tuning exams. Everything is going to go about the same besides Naruto getting a 9 out of 10 instead of his original score in the canon. With that being said, in the forest of death, everything goes according to plan, except for when they encounter Orochimaru. After Naruto unleashes his Nine Tails Chakra, he is bludgeoned by Orochimaru in this timeline, passing out. He would almost immediately awake to see Sasuke and Sakura in harm's danger. <clears throat> or rather, in harm's way. With that being said, he would jump, saving both of them from Orochimaru. And with that, Naruto would take a sword and a kunai. A kunai to his arm and a sword to his chest. Directly through one of his organs. <coughs> Naruto would cough. Oh. oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I said I would cherish these lives, not risk my life for people I care for. Ah. Uh. Uh, uh, uh. Orochimaru Snake Sonin Right I read about you somewhere Or maybe I heard about it It doesn't really matter There is a blade Inside of My Left lung I think Either that or I don't know can you pull it out? And maybe can you not try to attack my teammates? Naruto would grit his teeth and his hand would clench. You see, evils incarnates, as they die, they become closer to becoming an incarnate. Though this does come with... Although this does come with power, intelligence, speed, etc. It also comes with rage, hate... In love to further this hate. Hate powers evils incarnates. Much more than any training can. You. You come into a forest filled with Genin. Genin! You know that, right? And what do you do? You attack the smallest fish? Or you... Or you attack the fish that you please to attack? attack the fish that you want to attack. I have a theory. You want Sasuke over there. You want him all to yourself. Is that right? Am I right? You want something that he has, something that he is. Unfortunately, I cannot give that to you. Unfortunately, you will never have that Orochimaru. Or maybe fortunately, I'm not sure yet. But you're endangering all of the Genin in this forest. Never mind my squad, which you have beaten beyond compare. You know, I'm not fond of people like you. People who attack weaker people. For some odd reason, it angers me. It makes me feel hatred, Orochimaru. I'm sure you know the feeling of hating something or someone. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I now hate you, and thus you shall feel my wrath. Naruto's hand would lit a blaze. It was now engulfed in fire. Hmm. It's time. I will end you, Orochimaru. Here and now. Flame style. It should be noted. The people who use, or rather, dip into the hatred of evil's evil. The people who let the hatred of evil that is naturally within them as one of evil's incarnates, even if it's only just for a second, they access the hidden abilities of evil. You see, evil was evil was a man born with many powers, but he perplexed the world as his abilities were stronger than others. He also required no hand signs for his jutsus, and could utilize the elements in his own hands. Evil in his normal, less hating life, so to speak, was known as a man who had mastered elements over and over again. Created new elements, sub-elements. Some say that the Sage of Six Paths created the Kekigen guy. That the Kekigen guy stem from the Sage of Six Paths. But others say that it was evil himself that created the Kekigen guy. They created things like the Sharingan or Renegon or you get the point. Bone release, that kind of thing. <laughs> Even ice release. But with that being said, he was most known for being able to utilize the elements in his own palm. And however he saw fit, he could even engulf his whole body in flame, whilst remaining whole and untouched by the fire. <laughs> Naruto would then yell out, Flame style! Flame god! A small, godlike being would appear behind Naruto as it would then reach onto his fist. <sighs> this ability will send you to hell, Orochimaru. I hope you like it. Orochimaru would be slammed into a tree by Naruto. It would be here that fear would truly eclipse Orochimaru's eyes. Fear similar to that that he acquired. Fighting pain. And that of fighting Hitachi as well. Naruto would slam his fist down onto Orochimaru. As with that... He would pick Orochimaru up by the collar. It seems you're not dead yet, Snake Man. Or should I call you Snake Son in Orochimaru? Earth style! His hands turned to earth. As he would brutally beat Orochimaru with his now earth hands. I think that burning should do well. If you are to burn, then... You cannot come back. Which means that you die, right? That you just die. You know, I wouldn't be so perplexed by the thought of dying and coming back to life if I hadn't experienced it myself. Naruto would say this quietly, knowing that only Orochimaru could hear it, so his own demons wouldn't know that he can basically literally cheat death, oh, even though that they have seen it themselves. <laughs> And, well, knowing that Orochimaru would never come to figure this out in true, as he would be dead, in Naruto's eyes at least, then he would tell him that he can cheat death. With that, he would raise his hand to the sky. <sighs> it's over, Orochimaru. Flame style. Flame commander. Hell's Gate. <sighs> Naruto would punch his fist right through Orochimaru, as Orochimaru's body would be sent into a fiery pit of fire. His body was set ablaze completely, and all that remained was a snake that slivered under a few trees. Naruto was a fool. He saw the snake, but he disregarded it. 
You should have taken it aside of a Rochimaru being alive. A Rochimaru would sliver with that snake all the way back to one of his hideouts, where he would take the body of Kidomaru, the spider guy, if you guys can remember. You, you guys get the point. The one that Neji thought. <laughs> with that being said, in Kidomaru's body, he would sit contemplating. You see, it has been shown that Orochimaru can take on the bodies of other people. For instance, Sasuke. He died and took on Sasuke's body. And thus, he can basically jump curse marks. This is kind of what he did with Kitamaru. This time doing it a little differently because he is just a snake instead of a actual whole person. Or sort of whole, whatever you want to call it. With that being said, it all remains to be the same. Naruto is powerful, and Naruto defeated Orochimaru. He defeated Orochimaru, now has wasted a valuable vessel in coming back to life because he was killed trying to take the Sharingan. By what or by whom, he can only describe as a deliverer of death, a messenger even of death. Someone who sent him into a fiery pit. With that being said, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura would finish the training exams exactly how it should be finished. Obtaining all the scrolls and leaving the forest of death. Everything else in the forest continues as per usual. Gara does what he does, and so does everybody else. Though, the sound encounter with Dosu never happens in this timeline. At all. It just doesn't. And Sasuke in this timeline does not have the curse mark either. Meaning that Sasuke has no curse mark. And while well, Naruto comes out unscathed. With the same fate being related to Sakura and Sasuke. They are all unscathed coming out of the force of death. Sasuke no curse mark. Sakura no bruises, no cuts, no scratches. Which is surprising. And Naruto no pain whatsoever was really you know befell him as he healed from most injuries with that being said Eva was also known for his great healing abilities which is why naruto is healed even faster than in the original timeline with that being said naruto would report what he had done slash known to the third okage who congratulated Naruto on killing Orochimaru, but also questioned how Naruto did so. Asking no further questions, he believed Orochimaru to still be alive. With that being said, Naruto would leave Lord Okage's office. We now have a time skip, far past the training exams. The training exams go nearly the same as they did, with no interruptions this time. Lord Third does not die. And, well, the Sound and Sand Villages do not enact a great plan of war against the Leaf Village. Because it can't happen, it never does. So, Rochimaru is long gone, and the Sound with no leader have no orders. The Sand go in blindly without the help of the Sound. Naruto defeats Gara. Still gives him his classic Takno Jutsu, but defeats him nevertheless. Naruto, still training with Jiraiya in this timeline, does end up learning the summoning Jutsu. And with that, being a faster learner in this timeline due to the challenges of evil, he also manages to start learning the Rasengan. In its basic stages, the whole balloon popping thing, but he starts to learn it nevertheless. With that being said, we now have a small time skip of about one month. Orochimaru enters the village as Kitamaru. Naruto was going to leave the village for a late midnight stroll as he walks past Kitamaru. Kitamaru realizes it's Naruto. Kitamaru, who is actually Orochimaru. <clears throat> as Orochimaru would smirk, Naruto gone is a good thing. Naruto leaving the village is a good thing. <laughs> With that, Naruto would continue on his way as he would realize something was up. The presence he felt, it was akin to Orochimaru, almost exactly the same. 
Naruto would disappear and reappear. Kitamura would look back. Naruto was nowhere to be found. As Naruto now stood, well, he stood in a tree, watching Orochimaru. Naruto grit his teeth. I killed him with his, with my own hands. Orochimaru looked surprised that Orochimaru had died. Does Orochimaru too possess the ability to cheat death? Is he immortal? Naruto would grab onto his blade. Let's find out. With that, he would cut down Kitamaru, who would fall to the ground before getting up soon afterwards. Naruto, I wish you no harm. And you will leave the village and tell me how you sit here before me, alive and well, Orochimaru. Snake Sani. I killed you in the forest of death. You died there. By my hand. I saw to it that that was your fate. And it was your fate. So I am asking you why the hell you are sitting before me on the ground as... as Orochimaru the snake, Sonny. Do you have the ability to cheat death? Are you immortal? No. Unfortunately, I do not share the same gift that you have. But... I have acquired a form of immortality. I can, in a way, take on other bodies. I see. So this is an innocent body that you have taken. Why shouldn't I end it? Because you would be ending the innocent life as well. But if it eases your conscience, this man participated in giving his life for me in the first place. I see. Well, then you will leave. I have honor. I won't kill you for no reason, Orochimaru. But if I see your face in this village ever again, I will see to it that you are killed by my hand once more. And if you remain alive in some unorthodox way, some weird way that you can somehow be alive, then I will kill you again. And again. And again. I will hunt you down. Like the snake you are. And then I will drive my fist through your chest. Understood. And with that, we have completed part one of What If Naruto Had Nine Lives. This what if can also be called What If Naruto Was the Reincarnation of Evil. This should, in theory, be a three to four part series hopefully if everything gets done how i want it to get done if everything follows the storyline that i need it to follow then that is how long it will be which is hopefully how long it is as that would be really good but with that being said that is only a hope it's not known if it is under three or four parts uh then it will definitely get a part two as long as the light goal which i'll set it very very low um, 100 likes. No, 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 no. 200 to 400 likes, and I will immediately get started on working on part two of this what if. Um, but with that being said, Rami X, out. Happy birthday to me.